Yes, I'm uh, Jim Walmack from Lee County. I'm the chairman of the uh, Lee County Republican Party, and I'm currently in the race to run for the chairmanship of the North Carolina Republican Party. Uh, the election will be June the 3rd in Wilmington. Awesome. Um, so can you explain to me a little bit about what does the party chairman do for the party? Well, according to the state plan of organization, the party chairman is, is responsible to be the leader of the party, and most of the details in the plan require the chairman to convene meetings and to provide guidance uh, within the central committee and the executive committee of the party, the ruling bodies of the party. Uh, there are several other unwritten requirements of the party chairman, which are, which are essential duties and responsibilities. First and foremost, raising funds for candidates from the state level, uh, actually national, state, and local levels uh, to be responsible to help them raise funds. Uh, second responsibility he has is as a senior political advisor um, to uh, candidates, particularly for statewide office. A third responsibility is to grow the base of the party. Perhaps one that has been given the least amount of attention here recently is growing the base of the party, bringing in new voters. For example, uh, younger voters, minority voters, and, uh, and the Trump uh, voters from last fall, bringing those or assimilating them into the party. And then a, another responsibility of the chairman is to be a cheerleader for the party, to, uh, to motivate and inspire uh, grassroots workers all over the state uh, so they have effectively trained and organized precincts and get out the, so they can get out the vote and, and help win elections at all levels. So that sounds excellent. Um, I personally have done a good deal of work with the grassroots myself. And it always seems like the grassroots are kind of, you know, grumbling a little bit. Like they feel like um, oftentimes the, the, the governing body forgets about the grassroots. And I'm sure that there's something about that. You know, there's always going to be some grumbling because there are some people who are doing this work and some people who are doing that work. And how, how is it that you would do something different or new to um, give aid, aid and comfort to the grassroots. Well, that's a, that's, a, that's a great point to make, and it's one of the themes of my campaign. Uh, our party has been run more or less like a country club uh, for many years. Uh, and when uh, rank and file members of the Republican Party down at the grassroots level look at the central governance bodies of the party, they, they tend to look at it like a country club. It's a, something that they can't belong to. Uh, and they feel insulated away from, from the, the uh, ruling class of the party. Mm -hmm. I would rather run the Republican Party more like a business, where every, every employee of the business, every member of the business is treated as much as well or better than the clients of the business, that we are all about the base, that we understand that that's where the heart and soul of the party is, uh, and the rank and file Republicans, the ones that are in the precincts and the counties, doing, carrying all the, the water for the party and doing all the heavy lifting. Uh, those are the people where my focus will be. Uh, I believe that it's important, actually imperative, that the Republican Party leader, leadership class is, is accessible and working closely with the rank and file members of the party continuously throughout the year. I plan to be all over the state. I plan to work uh, with all the county chairs and the district chairs to make sure that we have every precinct organized and trained and educated and empowered with the tools necessary to win elections. And I don't know if you had a chance and opportunity to hear um, Hal Weatherman speak about the Dan Forrest campaign. Sure. He specifically gave us some instructions as the grassroots and talked to us about new technology, social media, how to use um, how to use the tools that we have that are free. Um, because as you said with the grassroots, they oftentimes feel like it's a country club and they can't afford, right. they can't afford to participate in helping their party, which is, you know, be that true or not true, we don't know, but something needs to be done there to communicate to them. And so, sure. did you have an opportunity to hear Hal speak about yes, that? Yes, in fact, I, I know Hal very well. I know okay. Dan Forrest very well. I worked on the, the Forrest campaign in 2012 and 2016. Uh, I was the Lee County coordinator and assisted in regional coordination for that campaign both times. I learned a lot from working on that campaign, in addition to working a lot of the local campaigns uh, for local candidates and for statewide candidates as well. Um, Hal has a, has a, um, has a mechanism, uh, a, a standard operating procedure that he does on that campaign, the same way that he did Sue Myrick's many congressional campaigns that he ran. Uh, very effective, it's proven uh, quite effective for Dan Forrest, making him the rock star of the party in North Carolina. Um, that's the sort of 
that's the sort of mechanism I want to use for all statewide candidates going forward. There's a drumbeat uh, mentality there that says you've got to constantly be hammering back or, or, or drumming back to, the, to the, uh, the indigenous population that they know the name, they know the message, uh, the brand of the Dan Forrest campaign. Everyone knows run, Forrest, run. Right. And it's not just a cliche, it's, it's actually a, a mentality. It goes, it goes throughout the election cycle, uh, even in the early stages. We need to bring that same mentality to all the statewide races, that same organization, that same effective uh, get out the vote effort that uh, the Forrest campaign pursued. And yes, Hal is Hal's an expert at it. We've learned a lot from him. Um, I want to cross fertilize a lot of those great ideas down to the local levels. Okay, that's that's very exciting for me to hear as a grassroots because I want to win. You that's know, right. I, I spend a lot of time, energy, effort at the at the polls. For example, I'll go all day long for the entire day and stand in, I'll be standing in the sun, the wind, the rain. I want to win. And so what I want to hear about, and I, I believe other people in the grassroots want to hear about, is how are we going to win right. elections? Because we do spend a lot of our energies doing that. So that's very exciting to me to hear as right. grassroots. So let me let me worker. attack on to what you just said, because there, there's there's some very interesting things, features, because you've obviously walked the walk. You've, you've been at the, the precincts uh, on election day or during early voting, standing out in the sun, uh, wishing you could get some water, mm -hmm. uh, hoping that, that uh, you can say the right words to, to prospective voters when they come to the polls. I've lived that as well. I've lived that through through a dozen election cycles where I've had to stand out there for all day or for, or for most of the day and then also at the same time taking those lulls to coordinate, make phone calls, get out the vote. You know, you understand that, that notion that, that every vote counts and that it's important to, to to have every precinct manned, to have to have something to hand to the voters when they're going in that, that'll stay with them when they go to the polls or when they go to the ballot and, and we can remember the names. So things like sample ballots, uh, the uh, cheat sheets or the, or, the, or the voter cards that you hand out at the polls, the uh, flyers, the, the ability to answer questions and answers. Um, um, those kinds of things are really important at the, at the, uh, for, for training the local workers. And there are, unfortunately, there are many precincts around the state, very large precincts, where there are thousands of voters that are not manned at all. People are walking in to, uh, un, un, uh, unchecked when they walk into the polls without a, without a sample ballot or without a cheat sheet so they know who the Republicans are on the ballot. Those are the kinds of things that we need to do at every precinct all across the state. Mm -hmm. I, I think that that sounds like you've really thought it through, and especially because you have personal experience. Because I, as, again, as a grassroots worker, feel like many times, um, you know, I don't want to overly criticize people who are running things because you have to have some skills to do that. But it makes, I often feel like people haven't done what I've done. And, right. and at the end of election day, I will be like, that's it, I'm done. I'm going to quit. I'm going to be done with the party. Right. Because I feel like people don't at the top. Well, you're not, you're not valued and cherished. That's, that's, a, that's a real problem. Disaffection within the party is a huge problem. Mm -hmm. We've lost more activist volunteers in the party in the last three or four years than, than probably in the 10 years before. Mm -hmm. People that really worked, labored endlessly to help get a, a candidates elected, and then there was no thanks shown, no, no genuine appreciation shown to, the, to them other than uh, fundraising letters that, they, that they, they're bombarded with. Uh, so they just feel like beasts of burden and they get tired and they just they, they retire from it altogether or they uh, or in some cases they change their party affiliation become unaffiliated uh, I want to bring those people back I want them to feel like they're cherished and valued and that they that that is the, that is, is my singular most most important focus in the party is making sure that we're we're empowering and training and showing the uh, grassroots workers how much we care for them yeah that's very exciting um, that, that's why I, I really I'm you have my support as grassroots, and I really feel as though you have the support of the grassroots. Um, it's hard sometimes because we don't want to criticize our other party members, but I really feel as though you have a new and unique message and something that is exciting, so that's why I, I want to get behind that, um, get behind you. Is there anything else? Yeah, one other thing I would like to, I would like to talk about, you know, I mentioned earlier about running the party like a business. There's, there's another aspect to that as well. In, in four years at West Point, 20 years in the military, uh, and including uh, a year or so of combat duty in, in southern Iraq and northern Saudi Arabia, um, one of the things I learned is, is about strategic planning and organization. To uh, to make a, a or to make a military organization effective, and I'd like to bring some of that same 
uh, that same operating procedure to the to the uh, Republican Party of North Carolina. I think it, it's imperative that we start acting like this is like we're at war and that we are fighting a campaign and we need to win the overall war against uh, the progressive and liberal movements in the, in the country, particularly those that are that are attacking our current president and, and our traditional American values. So I think we need to bring that same military type, that type attitude to disciplining the Republican Party in a way that we are organized top to bottom with effective leaders, that we have the ability to uh, to win at every stage that we are that we that we're constantly uh, watching the enemy and making sure that we're keeping them in check and that we're hitting them with every uh, type of ammunition that we have within the Republican Party and I believe taking that type of attitude uh, and being eternally vigilant on behalf of the party is something that will really set us up for success in the future. This is a red state that we're in. Uh, make no bones about it. We are more conservative than we are liberal in this state. And by golly, those people ought to be in the Republican Party. And I believe I can bring them in, organize them, and win these critical elections to get the governor's mansion back and to get the Supreme Court back in 2022 and to uh, continue to maintain a supermajority in the House and the Senate. I can do that with that, with, with that training and experience that I have. That's, that's excellent. That's very exciting to hear. So, Jim, that was all really, really um, interesting to hear about. Is there any plans that you have that you could talk about for fundraising for the party? Sure. Um, first off, I think goal setting is very important. We need to establish what our, what our trends have been in past odd year fundraising and even year fundraising. We need to do a better job at setting goals, measurable goals. And then, and then sitting down with the Central Committee and making sure that we have fundraising events scheduled and scattered throughout the year. Uh, I'm tired of, of fundraising on the backs of the rank and file Republicans. I think that we, we expect and demand too much of them already. We need, to, we need to look at the donor class of the party. We need to look at businesses and, and expressing the value they get from the Republican brand. I plan to market that brand across a much broader spectrum of potential contributors and to raise uh, $1 million every year that I'm uh, the chairman of the party. Um, I, would, I would hope that in the election years, in the general election years, that we're going to raise substantially more than that, and, I, and I'll have a plan to do so. Great. Thanks so much. Thanks for, mm -hmm. thanks for this time. Thanks for this interview. It's been awesome. Okay, great.